Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over wound cleansing. So really, how are we cleaning that wound? But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it does help my channel reach more people. And that is what my channel is all about, is helping people. So let's get started, guys. So first we'll talk about the actual cleansing solution. So what are we actually going to clean the wound with? Um, so normally when you get a cut, you clean it out with soap and water. That is perfect. Now we want to make sure that the tap water is potable drinking water. Okay. Because if you need to boil your water before drinking it, then you shouldn't be putting it on your wound, okay? So you do have to take special considerations. And especially because YouTube, I'm not just talking to people here in Canada or the US, I'm talking to people all over the world. So I wanna make sure that it, it's out there that if your water is drinkable, okay, if it's drinkable water, you can use it to cleanse a wound, okay? Um, but even we got to be cautious when showering um, because you want to make sure that you're not getting the wound wet if it's not drinkable water, okay? Because there can be pathogens or different microorganisms in that water. Um, so we're introducing a source of infection, right? Um, with that said, if you're showering, make sure that you're, you're showering your body and you're not having the water really running over top of it. The wound can get cleansed under the water. You just don't want all the dirty water going over it. Um, another cleansing solution is sterile water or normal saline. And then they also have a bunch of different surfactants, antiseptics um, for biofilms or infected wounds, okay? Um, there is honestly a ton of them. Uh, Vashi Wound Solution, one of them. Um, they, they just have a bunch of different things that you could use, chlorhexidine, uh, povidone iodine, right? They, there's all different types of things that you can cleanse a wound with if it's appropriate to use. Okay, so cleansing. So you want to avoid submerging and soaking your wound in potable water, okay? Because it's not sterile water. It's perfectly fine to use, but we're not going to soak it. Um, once again, washing your body must be separate from washing your wound, okay? You don't want that dirty water just flowing over top. Now, cleansing techniques. Okay, we want to remove bacteria without introducing bacteria to different parts of the wound. So when we're cleansing, I normally suggest, and this, this is best practice, um, you take one sterile gauze, um, you, you have it wet with your normal saline. Um, and now this is if you have really that slough material stuff that in the wound that you need to wipe out. Other than that, you can just use your uh, normal saline or sterile water in the bottle and squirt it over top of the wound, letting it all flow down, use gravity um, to your advantage and flush out that wound. Use the whole bottle, okay? The whole bottle, you're not supposed to put a cap on it or put tape on it or anything like that. Um, unless it has the twist tops, you if it has the breakable top, you should be using the whole container of it, flushing out that wound really, really well. Now, with that said, if there is slough or material in that wound that you need to wipe out, you can get the sterile um, gauze wet with your saline and wipe it out. So you're going to do one nice swoop of the wound down, um, or across, whichever way you're going, keep it in that direction, um, and then toss it. Next one, another wipe across the wound, toss it, okay? Um, I have also seen um, where, like, for example, um, wound solutions that you're letting sit on the, uh, the actual wound. So you get it wet and you put it on there. Um, 
and then when you take it off it'll it'll kind of look like this it does absorb into that quite well um, but you also do want to give it a, a good wipe especially if you have fluffy material um, or if it's slimy that's a biofilm okay so we need to be disrupting that wound base um, so our antimicrobials and and the things that we're using on the wound are actually working Okay, so we have um, a few different ways that we can cleanse a wound. The first one is standard aseptic technique. This is also called clean technique, or we have surgical um, aseptic technique. This is also called sterile technique. Okay, so we can have clean and sterile technique. Now, with that said, we're always trying to keep a wound as sterile as possible all the materials that we're using as sterile as possible, okay? Especially when we're using clean technique. Yes, we are using um, non-sterile gloves, um, clean non-sterile gloves. But with that said, we want to be being very cautious and use a non-touch technique where we're using our sterile tweezers, we're using our sterile scissors, okay? To move things, and just be very cautious what you're what you're touching with your gloves. They're non they're they're not sterile. Okay. Now this is normally meant for wounds um, that take about less than twenty minutes to do the dressing. Now when we have more in depth chronic wounds, we do want to be using the sterile technique. So surgical aseptic technique, sterile. We're using sterile gloves for this, uh, sterile solution. And then you just wanna make sure that you are using um, personal protective equipment as appropriate, okay? Okay, so wound cleansing can also involve debridement because sometimes there's pieces of dressing residue or visible contaminants, non-viable tissue, slough, debris. It can all be sitting there. We need to clean it, clean, clean that wound base up, okay? So there are different methods of debridement and I will link that up above. Um, because there are different debridement methods and I go more into this um, in that video, but we have surgical, enzymatic, autolytic, biological, and mechanical debridement, okay? Um, I have this really cool chart here, um, the speed, the t how, how selective um, it is for that slough or debris, um, how painful it can be, exudate, infection, and cost, okay? So I have all that here uh, for you guys, but once again, I did link it up above um, for the different debridement methods. So I hope this video did give you a better idea of how to actually cleanse the wound and how we should be doing it and kind of the products that we're, we're using. Um, but that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now.